Well, maybe you're coupled up, married or dating, maybe you've ticked the it's complicated box, maybe you're all about the single life, but whatever your status, we're being given insight into the impact that COVID-19 could be having on our relationships. Turns out a peptide called oxytocin produced in our brain is having one of two impacts on us. One, it's bringing our hearts together or it can help induce aggression. So it's a fine line, you see. And now that conclusion has come from Israel's Weizmann Institute of Science, they've been looking at the so-called love hormone a little closer. And PhD student Sergei Anpilov from the Weizmann Institute of Science joins me now with more. Sergei, a pleasure to have you. Now, you have been studying mice living in semi-natural conditions. I suppose you can call the way we've been living during COVID-19 semi-natural or less than semi-natural. What has your uh, research shown? Uh, Yeah, indeed, uh, there's quite a few similarities in uh, how we looked at the mice and uh, the latest uh, experience that we had. The findings of our research support the hypothesis that oxytocin is not just acting as a pro-social agent in our brain to make us friendlier, rather it is amplifying the social cues that we get from the people that are surrounding us. So if I meet a person with a friendly face, I will perceive it even uh, friendlier and vice versa. And when we examine the effect of oxytocin on group of mice, uh, which is uh, quite a complex social context, uh, oxytocin can increase uh, not only the social interest or the friendliness, but also aggression among the mice. Mm. And basically the direction of the effect is dictated by the uh, social context that the mice uh, find themselves in. So, I mean, I'm not a scientist, but it makes me think that it's important we're looking after our mental health if it's something that's just enhancing what we're already walking around with. So uh, what can this discovery help psychiatrists with? Um, Translating the findings from mice uh, to humans is a general and a huge challenge. And this is something that is uh, widely known as the translational gap. And I uh, think that studying the behavior in complex social context, which is more relevant to humans, uh, rather in uh, simplified interactions of just a pair of mice, is already a substantial step uh, in the right direction, uh, aiming at translatability of the, of the findings eventually. All right, I just want to ask you very briefly, Sergey. does that mean that we can learn how to perhaps control where the oxytocin goes, if it's going to help us move towards that feeling of love or, or if we can control it moving towards, uh, not moving towards aggression? Uh, yeah, I think we do not yet understand uh, the oxytocin system or the brain in general well enough to claim that. Uh, There are many cognitive techniques which, with hard work over a long time, can yield some good results if we want to become a better person, but uh, we don't yet know well enough what actually happens uh, in the human brain to mediate it and uh, what is the specific role of oxytocin in it. It was really interesting, and thank you so much for being with us and for sharing that insight, Sergey. Thank you. It was a pleasure.